afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Bio here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. Well, this is kind of sort of a Civil Air Patrol video, but it's also kind of talking about doing fun activities virtually with people. So take this video as you will. There are a number of different things that you can do, and it's just a matter of being as creative as you can in order to get people engaged. Because something that I have found is that people if they don't turn their webcams on, they may not necessarily be getting as much out of the experience and they may not feel as engaged. So one of my first recommendations before getting into the different activities that you could do is asking people to at least leave their webcams on just so that it feels like you're interacting with people a little bit more. Like for me personally, when I'm making YouTube videos, at first it was very, very difficult to talk to just the camera and not talking to other people's faces. But now that I've gotten accustomed to it, I, I am fine now. But some people, it doesn't feel like social interaction talking to just the camera and then no, nothing else, no, no people, I don't see people. So by having the reactions of people's faces and kind of that semi-physical feeling of being around other people is really nice in general. So, not everyone will have webcams, but if they do and they are allowed to turn on their webcams if they're cadets, then please request that people turn their webcams on, at least for the activities that you're doing. In addition to having webcams on, I try to engage everyone who is in the activity, whether it be 10 people or 20 people or 100 people I haven't done yet, but I've, I've done it to about 20 people and I've done both like lectures <laughs> virtually and team building activities. Team building activities, everyone should be engaged in some way. Like one of the team building exercises that I developed recently to do virtually was that I gave each person different pieces of information and I would send it to them through direct messages and then they would have to take all of their individual hints and clues to determine who had the unicycle. And so I created a logic puzzle specifically for that but I'm not going to post it because if people who watch my channel are potentially going to do this TLP later on then they might get the answer. So I'm not posting it here, but it was a really fun activity for me to put together because it was like, I came up with a creative way to have different categories of information and then each hint kind of hinted towards like, this person has this thing, this person has that thing. And then eventually they would combine all of the clues to determine who owns the unicycle. So that was a really fun activity that I've done with a few different groups and some of them got it done, some of them didn't, but the point isn't getting it done. The point is coming together as a team to try to problem solve. And one of the biggest challenges to doing it virtually is that there's always two or three people that are kind of taking the lead on things. Or at least there was in most cases. Sometimes it was a few more and then it was kind of like too many hens in the hen house. But in most instances, it was very, approachable for the leader to just kind of be like, okay, so let's gather all of the pieces of inf information on this specific thing. Who has information on this? And then they would have that facilitated discussion with their team members. However, the problem with this is that some people never said anything. And it can be a little bit more challenging to engage people on a virtual platform. So for me, I call on people, like individual people's names, and I'm like, ah, Cadet Schmeagle, what are your thoughts on this? What kind of information do you have? What hints do you have to help us solve this riddle, this logic puzzle? And so that can be a really effective technique to get people engaged and feel like they are contributing somehow to the team's success. Because if people don't feel like they're contributing or they're getting anything out of it, they just click off and then they don't want to do it anymore. So that, that's just a few tips and suggestions. If you want to come up with your own logic puzzles, please feel free to do it. Just make sure that they have enough information and it's not given too much information beforehand. I don't recommend just copying and pasting stuff that you find on the internet. That's one, one big thing. Yeah, websites and YouTube videos like this one will give you all the recommendations. But it's more fun and you get more out of the experience when you and only a few other people know the solution and other people have to actually work to figure it out and they have to work together, which makes it even better 
for a team leadership problem. So transitioning into my next little bit, ways to engage people just because they're turning on their video can include like wearing a hat, like something that I did when I was teaching um, a seminar for RCLS virtually was that I asked them to wear a funny hat and they seemed to enjoy it because I was like, you have 10 seconds to go grab a hat somewhere in your house and bring it here. And they were like, oh, oh no. And so it was almost like a search, a hasty search for whatever hats that they could find. And I think they personally enjoyed it. And we even got to see some of their baseball caps from encampments. So that was fun. And then another thing that I had done was I had asked them to make crafts over the course of the week and bring it to the following week because it was over the course of four weeks. And so I was like, hey, make a craft and bring it or make something and bring it for next time. So someone made a Lego hat and so they combined the making of something into what their hat was, which was pretty cool. Um, I, I made this triple at one point. I, have, I also had like a Pokeball thing that I worked on at one point. But it's just fun to make things in general and share that with people. So this is something that I shared. I'm, I didn't make it during the week, of course, but I, I was making other things for games and I wasn't going to just spoil all the stuff for my game, so I shared my trouble instead. But engaging people outside of the meeting and then having them bring something can be another effective way to make people feel like they're engaged, not just during the virtual meeting, but outside of it. So something that I have also proposed to my squadron, and I propose you do as well, is creating a squadron or group level cookbook. And so then all of the active members in the squadron come up with like one or two recipes that are their family favorites that go over really well. It could be desserts, it could be just normal dinner dishes, it could be an amazing sandwich of some kind, and then have like a standardized size for pictures so let's say it's like a 600 by 400 picture and then you've got the picture of the food you've got the name of the food you got the ingredients and then step-by-step -step instructions on how they do it as long as the instructions are detailed enough the recipes should be effective but part of the fun of it is if someone doesn't necessarily send the most detailed recipe you can see all the different people's results and so I proposed to my squadron that we do like a weekly challenge after we get the recipe book together where, well, we are like, hey, here is this epic macaroni and cheese recipe we got from Cadet Schmeagle. For this week, make this amazing macaroni and cheese and then take a picture of it, send it to our public affairs officer, and we'll post the pictures on our social media and kind of share this, this fun recipe with everyone. That is such a loud car. So <laughs> um, that's something fun that I'm really looking forward to because we did something like that when I was in middle school for like German class and we were supposed to come up, I think with what was German recipes. And I was like, uh, I don't really have German recipes, but I can search the internet for it. And that wasn't as fun, but if you can put together like family favorites that you know really work well because you make that so many times, that might be super fun. So that's something else that you could consider. Another fun thing that I did with my RCLS seminar was that I did skits. And so <laughs> I would just randomly pick a topic that I know quite a bit about, like Legend of Zelda or Star Trek. And I asked my seminar members, like in a specific group of people, make a skit about Star Trek or make a skit about Legend of Zelda and they would take that skit prompt and then they would make something and record it and then we would watch it together and just kind of have fun enjoying what they put together and you could do this live like you could have different virtual rooms where each of the teams can plant and then you do it live or you could have it pre-recorded where they coordinate outside of whatever meeting it is and then they come together. One of the problems with doing it not live is that if people aren't constantly reading their emails, then it might be a little bit difficult for people to collaborate because they'll be like, hey person, you're not responding to emails and we gotta make this skip by tomorrow. Are you available? And then they don't respond and it's like, ah, ah, okay. 
So that's, that's another idea for you if you are interested in doing skits. Some people aren't super comfortable with public speaking, so skits is kind of like a fun way to push people outside of their comfort zone while also being in a group. And then there are a few other ones. So there's one that I like to call onomatopoeias. So it's kind of like the name game where you have to say your name and then the person who went before you. So let's say we've got uh, Red and then we've got Barry and then we've got Wheel. So then in order, Red would go first and Red would be like Red. And then Barry would be like Red, Barry. And then Wheel would be like Red, Barry, Wheel. And then maybe the last person is like... Uh, sharpie so then red berry wheel sharpie but instead of it being names it would be onomatopoeias and onomatopoeias are like the spelled out sound effect that you might hear like swoosh for like whoosh or kablam or ratatat tat boom if you've ever read the hedge the happy hedgehog band i highly recommend if, if you have not it was a childhood favorite of mine, and there was a lonely dog who would dance, and I recently read it, and it was just fabulous. So, read it if you if you have time. It's not a long read. It's probably about three minutes, and it's got some really cute doodles in it. But all of those sounds that are written out are all examples of onomatopoeias. So you could do something with that, or you could do just, like, random words that people have to remember, which might be challenging, but... If people are up for the challenge, then they should totally do it. There's also a, a game where you have to say numbers. So um, you are counting up. And if you say the number at the same time as someone else, then both of you are out. So let's say right now it's, it's like five. And I say five and you say five, then both of us are out. But that also is kind of tricky to do because virtually you can't really read nonverbal cues as well you can read them it's just a little bit more challenging because people might have lag on their cameras and in the internet realm or people may not have their webcams on and it's just people talking over each other so that's something to watch out for there is a cliched one which is two truths and a lie what you can do i assume you understand what that is where you each person like writes down two truths and one lie and they don't say which one's the lie and so then people have to guess and then you can come to a consensus as a team as to which one you think it is and then the person's like ha ha this one's the lie and then you learn more about other people there's also another one that i have done which is called story time which each person in the group says a sentence that's added to the story i've done this with my squadron twice once with just senior members and once combined with the cadets and senior members i think that it, it was fun both times and the story was both, uh, the both of them were about encampment. So it, it kind of went a little all over the place because some people have never been to encampment, they don't know what it is, and hopefully they just watch the videos and then they'll maybe find out. But I, I don't plug it at my unit, so it's, it's okay. So in terms of doing story time, I would have a scribe writing down all of the sentences and then at the end they would read out all of the sentences. You could also do something like Mad Libs, where each person says a word, and you could do an encampment-themed one, where you come up with your own Mad Libs. Like, you would write out a story, and then you would take out specific words, like specific nouns, specific adverbs, adjectives, conjunctions, and, well, probably not conjunctions, but anything that you want to make it into your own, like, custom-made Mad Libs cap edition. Maybe we should make something like that. I don't know. Let me know if you are interested in Cap Mad Libs down below. But anyway, so there are there are a few ideas in this video of what you could do, but honestly, it's up to you on how you want to engage your people. I know some people had requested, how do I engage people on the virtual platform? And to be honest, just show them that you care about them. Engage them. Follow up on their training. See how things are going. You could get Jackbox games. You could play Jackbox games. But at the end of the day, it's you showing that you care about your people and how they're doing, not just in CAP, but outside of CAP. So that's everything that I'm going to say for this video. I have a, a few more suggestions, but like Scribble.io, Scribble.io, which it's basically like 
Pictionary. Well, is it Pictionary? Whatever, whatever. Yeah, I guess it's Pictionary where you, you draw the stuff. There's also, I mentioned Jackbox games, virtual escape rooms, but they cost money. And uh, there's learning circles and playing cards.io, but I, I haven't really done any of those except for Scribble, and people enjoyed that. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. Please, if you have any additional ideas that you would like to share with people about how to engage people virtually, please feel free to include them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and that is all, folks. Until next time, doodles. Yeah.